New Hampshire home and hustle. It's like way up there. Whether moving or buying your first home, safety is likely a high priority because feeling safe and secure in your home is a deciding factor when choosing a neighborhood. But what does that mean? What things pose the biggest threat to your life here in New Hampshire? Stick around, the last one may surprise you. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Jen Bear, and I'm a realtor and ballroom dance instructor here in New Hampshire. I'm also a lifelong resident and a mom currently raising her family in this historic brick house. Uh, I feel that New Hampshire is one of the safest places to raise my family, but what do the facts say? We are going to be going over that next, uh, but it is important to note that safety is a subjective term. Everybody has a different idea of what that means to them. Um, I'm curious to know your thoughts. Please put them in the comment below what you feel about safety, um, especially if you're coming from another state, I'd like to know your opinions about that as well. Oh, and before I forget, if you wanna learn more about New Hampshire, make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell. That way you won't miss out on my next video. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a normal day in the life of a person here in New Hampshire and what things pose the biggest risk factors to their safety. And I'm gonna to try to stick to the facts with just some of my experiences mixed in. All right, let's get started. So first thing in the morning, you wake up, maybe grab a cup of coffee, and then you check the weather. What kind of natural disasters affect New Hampshire? For this, I use data or data I always go back and forth on those, um, from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, because they have calculated the risk for every county in the United States um, based on of 18 natural disasters, and such as earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, hurricanes, uh, f volcanoes, and even tsunamis. So they used information on how often these natural disasters strike, how many people and property are in harm's way, how vulnerable that population is, and how prepared they are to not only combat the natural disaster, but also to recover from it. And from that, they created the National Risk Index for natural disasters, which I'm gonna show you now. It basically figured out what parts of the country are more aware of the risk and more prepared to deal with it. And New Hampshire ranks very low on all natural disaster risks. Mother Nature does not really surprise us up here in New England. Uh, we expect certain natural disasters every year and we're well prepared for them. Uh, the ones that I feel are the, the biggest dangers are blizzards and ice storms mixed with the high winds. So, so case in point, most houses have generators for if we do lose power. The town has budgeted every year for salt trucks and plows to, in order to combat. All summer long, you'll see crews out cutting down tree branches that might be near electrical lines. Again, we are very well prepared for the disasters that are bound to hit us here in New Hampshire. And the best way to be prepared for a natural disaster is just to know your area. Uh, so you can rely on local experts like myself, uh, or you can do your own research as you are. All right, next, you are ready to leave for work or head out wherever you're gonna go and you're gonna be driving. How safe is it out there on New Hampshire roads? As of 2019, the leading cause of death in the entire country for every single state are car accidents. However, each state does have different types of accidents and different mortality rates. So how does New Hampshire rate, considering that we don't have a seatbelt law for anyone over the age of 18? When it comes to the number of deaths per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, the rates range from 0.54 to 1.83. New Hampshire is 1.07, right about in the middle. And Massachusetts is only 0.54, which is the lowest. Looking at this map, you can see that the states with the lowest rates per 100 million vehicle miles traveled are generally located in the Northeast. It doesn't mean that we have fewer accidents. I mean, our roads are narrow. They weren't designed for the kind of traffic we have, which can lead to really angry drivers. Uh, but it does mean that we don't have as many serious accidents even considering the weather. In case in point, Massachusetts may have the lowest mortality rate, but they have the highest accident rate. That's how they get the reputation for being such bad drivers. If you would like to see how your state compares, I will have a link down below for any of these studies that I mentioned here today. So while you're away from home, how safe are your loved ones and your property from crime here in New Hampshire? So in assessing crime rates, crime is broken down into two categories. There are violent crimes, such as robbery, assault, rape, and murder. Those are the ones that involve force or the threat of force. And then there's property crimes, such as burglary, larceny, and motor vehicle theft. Now, using the most recent data from the FBI, 
These can be measured per capita, which is per 100,000 people. And then using the two numbers, one for violent crime and one for property crime, putting them together and averaging out a number, we create a safe index. So according to homesnacks.com, they have a map. New Hampshire actually placed second in both categories, but because they averaged out, they became first. So New Hampshire is the safest state according to this data. Maine came first for violent crimes being the lowest, and Massachusetts came in first for property crimes being lowest. So both of our neighbors were in first place. New England in general is the safest part of the country. But keep in mind that this is just all based off of numbers and it's kind of hard to decide why this is so. Are the citizens here just happier? Do we have a more effective police force and and laws and regulations? Not sure, but it is kind of comforting to know the numbers. And now I'm gonna give you a list of what is considered to be the 10 safest cities to live in in New Hampshire. We have Atkinson, Deerfield, Kingston, Ware, Sandown, New Boston, Enfield, Epsom, Wyndham, and Danville. So also connected to crime are the reasons that crime exists in the first place. And back in 2016, New Hampshire made nationwide news for having a really serious opioid crisis where we had over 500 deaths in one year. So how safe is, are you and your family from drug addiction here in New Hampshire? First, why are more people dying from opioid abuse in New Hampshire? In 2018, New Hampshire was third in the top 10 states with the biggest drug addiction crisis. Now we can't blame the weather because both Maine and Vermont have a lower number. And so through my research, it seems to have come down to a few things. One, doctors in New Hampshire were overprescribing pain medications. There was also very little funding for mental health and addiction services here in the state. There also wasn't, because of that lack of funding, there was not a lot of education for even medical personnel and the general public to know the dangers of painkillers and pain medication and addiction. There were also very few treatment centers, especially for anybody that was out in a more rural area here in the state. And last but not least, just where we are located, we tended to be a trafficking source for the bigger drug manufacturing and distribution centers in Massachusetts and to Canada. And also drugs were selling for a higher amount. People were willing to spend more for them in New Hampshire, so it was very attractive to drug dealers. So how has New Hampshire responded? Well, since then, we have put more funding into the education, especially for um, doctors to not overprescribe pain medications. We do have a database now, or database, uh, that tracks everybody, so there's less likelihood of being able to shop doctors and be able to get pain medication from more than one source. And the state also created safe stations, which opened up fire stations to be a place where someone can go to seek medical help and then also then be handed over to treatment centers. And that was supposed to be temporary until a permanent solution came about, which it just did last year. So now we have the doorway program, and I will have links to that down below. Uh, now anyone can call 211 24 hours a day in order to get services. And then there are now nine permanent locations and treatment centers throughout the state in order to help with drug addiction, substance abuse. And according to the latest CDC data, New Hampshire has decreased the amount of over dose deaths between 2018 and 2021 by 11%. And it was also interesting to note that between June of 2020 and June of 2021, when the rest of the country had increasing numbers of overdose deaths, New Hampshire was one of only four states that decreased its drug overdose deaths. So in typical New Hampshire fashion, once we became aware of a problem, we attacked it full force and only time will tell how well we are battling that. So moving on with our day, maybe we came home from work or maybe it was a weekend and we decided to go outside and do some yard work or take some time to take a walk in the woods. How safe are we in New Hampshire from insect-borne illnesses and diseases? Unfortunately, New England is one of those regions in the United States that is the epicenter for Lyme disease, transmitted by the black-legged tick, which we call deer ticks here. And they're, of course, the, the really tiny ones that are hard to see. Incidents of tick-borne diseases are more prevalent here, but we still do have um, mosquito-borne illnesses as well, like West Nile. So the best way to reduce your chances of getting bitten by any of these bugs is to destroy their habitat. Because this is a known problem, there are a number of companies that you can shop around and find out who has the best rates in order to come and treat your yard. And so they can spray the perimeter, and they can either do it chemically or organically. And this would greatly reduce the risk for your family and your pets when they're out in your own yard. 
Now, if you're going to take a walk in the woods, there are many ways you can protect yourself as well, especially from the ticks. You want to wear long pants tucked into your socks and long sleeves. You can also put bug repellent on your clothes. When you come back from your walk, you can use one of those sticky brushes on your body to possibly get them off if they're on your outside of your clothes. You want to immediately wash those clothes and take a shower. And definitely check your hair. I tend to find ticks on my kids every year in their hair in the spring. Uh, so it's definitely a place you want to check. And again, just like with natural disasters, because it's something that is predictable and we know about it every year, there are numerous remedies out there that will help you battle the safety risk. Okay, so let's say the worst thing did happen and there was a natural disaster or a car accident or you got bit by a tick. How safe are you in New Hampshire hospitals? It is really scary to think when I was doing this research that you have a better chance of survival for certain conditions depending on what part of the country you live in. So this is definitely a safety concern. Now, according to Wallet Hub, the top two states that have the best hospitals in order are Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Massachusetts is home to some of the best hospitals in the country, such as Massachusetts General Hospital and Brigham and Women's Hospital. It's also our closest neighbor, and any time that I have needed a second opinion or any family member had a serious medical condition or surgery that was required, we were encouraged to get a second opinion somewhere in Massachusetts or Boston, and it literally was an hour drive in order to accomplish that. So overall, the numbers correspond to how I feel about New Hampshire being a really safe place to live and raise my family not only in not having that many safety risks, but also in our ability to be prepared against these risks and to be treated for them if necessary. If you are thinking of moving to New Hampshire, check out in the description below or just leave a comment if you can't find it. Um, I have a relocation guide that I put together that could answer even some more questions you may have about New Hampshire. If you found this video helpful and would like me to make more like this, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. That way I know to go ahead and make more. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Hustle on my friends. I will see you next time.